I use those Schick injectors. Those are super sharp little razor blades. You've got to be careful with them. They will cut your finger wide open really quickly. But you're just going to bite into the bark. You're going to take out one little chip. You do an angle cut at the bottom of that chip cut. So you've got um, kind of a check mark uh, cut into the bark of, that, of your rootstock. And again, this can be little rootstock or it can be some bigger rootstock. And then you're going to take that razor and you're going to slide it right under an individual bud. Um, and you're going to cut the bottom of your check mark. In other words, a kind of a mirror image or the same shape of cut as what you cut out of the rootstock. And you're going to pull out that little individual bud. That little tiny bud is all that you're uh, grafting. Boy, my farmer hands, they're a mess, aren't they? Always dirty. Now, we cook on wood, so I often have uh, soot on my hands because I'm the guy who cooks breakfast around here. Now, so there you go. You've got your little chip bud. Uh, you slide it right into that rootstock right where you made the, the chip cut on the rootstock. And you set it to one side, again, not up the middle, one side, because you're looking for that cambium to cambium contact. Uh, chip budding is good for cherries or uh, stone fruits. Like I said, you can do it in the spring. You can do it in the fall. Um, I did, I've done, it works fine. Commercially they do it, and I've done it quite a few times myself, where you graft in late August or September. Uh, the bud will heal up, uh, and then the following spring, that bud will pop out and start to grow. It's really cool. Bud sits there all winter. Anyway, so there's your chip bud. You're going to band around it with a rubber band, just like your other grafts, but you're not going right over the tip of the face of that bud uh, with your rubber band. You're going just above it, just below it. And this is where you really need parafilm. I'm not quite sure how you do a chip bud without parafilm necessarily, but you take your parafilm right over the face of that bud, and the parafilm is soft. The bud will poke right through it. So two or three layers of parafilm right over the bud, and that's it. You're sealed up. Um, and that's the final uh, product. Um, now this is a chip bud. This is right out in our front yard. This is not a picture off the internet. This is my tree. Uh, I don't mess with cherries much. They are really difficult trees to grow in our climate, but I do love the flavor of them, so I play with them a little bit. They're not really, they're crummy from a food producing perspective in terms of their average productivity, but I can't help myself. I love the flavor of cherries. So this is a commercial cherry rootstock. It's been in the ground three or four years. I actually failed to graft, last year I had tried to graft it and graft just didn't take. So then in the fall, I chip budded it. There's two chip buds, and you can see they're both growing. Uh, so in this spring, this tree is a forked tree, so it has several branches. This is one of the branches. The bottom of the tree is about an inch and a half, maybe, diameter. So it's a nice, hefty rootstock at this point. Uh, that bud wasn't growing, and I said, eh, I'm going to go ahead and push it. So I whacked off the top and took all the branches off around it, and that bud said, oh, my turn to grow, so it took off growing. Now, that's a black heart cherry, which is uh, they plant them up at Monticello. Uh, Thomas Jefferson used to grow them. It's a non-commercial sweet cherry. It probably will never make fruit here, but hey, I can't help it. I'm playing around. But anyway, that's a fall chip bud uh, growing in the spring. So I'll let the other side of that tree grow through this summer. And next spring, this thing will be up three or four feet at least. I'll take off the rest of that stuff. And then this little bud, that one tiny little bud, becomes the whole tree, which is kind of cool. Uh, now, my favorite kind of grafting in the whole wide world is wild grafting. Uh, usually I do that with bark grafting. Uh, that is a wild persimmon tree you're looking at that I am just about to take off with a set of loppers. And as you can see, it is a good-sized tree. You can, If you find rootstock growing or trees growing that are of the same variety, same species that you want to graft, persimmons are my absolute favorite. But ornamental pears, those Bradford pears people plant, those things are invasive. They go all through the forest. You find those on your property, you can graft onto them. Wild plums throughout the southeast, there's a lot of those. You can graft onto those. Wild pawpaws, wild mulberries, they're also... Uh, you learn the shape of that mulberry leaf. They're everywhere. They're just weeds all over the place. Wild pecans in our area. Now, these are trees that grow in the southeast. So if you can find trees on your land or on your farm that are already growing, that are in a reasonably convenient location, the amazing thing is you've already got this huge rootstock. You're not transplanting anything. You're not disrupting anything. You're just grabbing a, a healthy, strong tree and taking advantage of that big rootstock that's already there, and bang, you wipe, whack off the top of it. Um, there's my scion. Now, this is a real graft. I'm not doing a pretend graft in this case. This is for real. Just had somebody taking pictures while I did it. Now, in this case, this particular scion looked really moldy. I mean, the bark looked great, but it, it just it was a little too damp. So I just wiped it off with alcohol, you know, give it a little, let it dry for a minute. Uh, now, you can only do a bark graft when the bark is peeling, uh, slipping, as they call it. Professor Bark Slip. He's a, a guy down in Asheville, North Carolina, who teaches uh, grafting and whatnot. But in any case, Slipping means that you can put your knife into the bark on a tree, and when you pull back on that bark, it'll peel like a banana. If you do that with dormant graft, with a dormant wood, uh, it won't peel. It won't peel at all. So this is an active wood graft. You can only do this in April or May. Um, you prepare your scion uh, exact same way you would 
uh, for any other graft. Uh, as I said before, warm, cloudy weather is the best for outdoor grafting because you're right out there in the sunshine. You get baking hot, dry weather can kill your scions before they have a chance to grow. Yeah.